Coming up next on Wall Street Warriors. Today's the start of the official bear market. Stress levels are off the charts. The American economy is so weak right now. 13 bit 80, 13 bit 80. We're down 13. You're killing me. The tension is visible. Just keep me updated. Goodbye. This is like the wild, wild west of trading. It's nuts. There's more money than I've ever seen. A broker comes into the crowd with a 10,000 lot order, and the premium on the order is huge, crazy money. Billions and billions of dollars are traded on a daily basis out here. Capitalism to the extreme. A lot of people make a lot of good money down here, but you pay the price too. Right now we're in a little tricky area. The American public wants a rally, but uh, any kind of move to the downside gets people panicked. I think we could start having a problem in the market. Hey Gary, check it too, right? I think the credit crisis is huge right now because when the U.S. economy gets bad, people run and they buy oil, they buy gold. There's a confidence that uh, has eroded. There's considerable uncertainty. There's a lot of money on the sidelines. Things are bad across the board. The dollar's getting pounded because the American economy is so weak right now. There's a problem, I mean, there's, there's a problem that has to be solved. Something's gotta be fixed. We have another 50 referrals that just came in. We could probably raise a cool $3 million out of that seminar. Now, you had an ACAT come in last week. Did it settle? Yeah, well, it settled for about 620000 yeah, The rest yeah. of it didn't settle. Today is definitely going to mark a historic day because we are officially in a bear market. Front page of the Wall Street Journal, the New York Times, and all these other uh, financial uh, newspapers are calling this the Great Depression. We currently have oil, natural gas, the dollar's at a 52-week low, and those three components of the economy are hurting us really bad. Right now, you need to keep everyone calm, collective, and tell them about the option strategy. Don't get into the panic mode. Because, because everyone, everyone, panics, panics, everyone panics when everything's going wrong. You know, no one can see the light of day. And this is what it tells me. This is opportunity all over the place. Persona, I'm sorry. All right. A little bit of a hectic day right now. Obviously, you know, today's the start of the, uh, the official bear market. I'm a financial advisor. I've been doing this 14 and a half years, along with my partner, which is also my brother, Ken. We deal with stocks, bonds, and options. Okay, we picked it up right around 43, it popped up to 48.81. The same thing with FXP. We were buying that at 59 bucks all day long. That's now trading at 84.28. Philip Broussard. Some people say don't do business with your family, but I don't know who else I could do business and trust. The writing's on the wall. All you have to do is go the opposite way. But every single day, myself and my brother, we reach a, a point of uh, disagreement. You're, you're a genius on that. And you know what? No, I had you a called client, me an idiot. I called, him an idiot. I called you an idiot on That's that right. because you know what? I actually booked some of my clients out of the SKF 
right around $120 because the market just Phil rally. likes to do things his way. And I like to go out and do things my way. You Ken told me wrong. it was wrong. I said, listen, I'm up 20% right now. I'll take the profit. And that's it. He held on for another block for some other guys. And uh, he's up actually another another. 15% from where I was, so total right now, he's up about 38% on SKF. He's looking good. It's kind of good that he's my alternate ego here. So when I think I'm right and I'm wrong, he's right. And when he's wrong, I'm right. So you get the best of both worlds. I watched the past three months, oil go from 80 to 130. But it's gonna turn, right? I mean, in the US, prices are high enough. In London, they're picketing and they're burning gas stations down, right? Wall Street is feast or famine. We just came out of five years of hyper growth and boom, we got hit with the subprime crisis and Wall Street started to pare back and lay off. The stress levels are off the charts. There's a lot of hysteria in the markets now. Many of the energy hedge funds are flat or minus for the year. Hedge funds are now managing a significant share, probably 50% of America's investable assets. Is he worth looking at or not really? So what I do is I look for undiscovered hedge fund managers and introduce them to some of the largest investors on the planet. Grains, yeah, uh, interest rates, and uh, stock indices. And he's got a 20% rate of return. On, and that's, those are right on top of each other. Can he They're high profile investors all over the country and all over the world, and they just need to put capital to work. 30 million euros committed which is about $48 billion. They said they could do 250 more behind that. We have way too much money chasing too few good managers. His beta is pretty high. He's losing money when everyone else is losing money. I look for managers who generate consistent positive returns in all environments. My fortunes are tied to the manager. If I find successful managers, I make a lot of money. And if they don't perform, I don't get paid. Hello, this is Christy. What's that? I am Christy Ross, and I am the CFO of the brokerage division of Thinkorswim. What do you mean by that? There's always a lot going on. That's one of the things about Thinkorswim. Constant deadlines. We can't have that happen. Make sure this gets booked properly. Goodbye. Today, it's expiration Friday, and so being a broker dealer, there are a number of things that we need to request from our database team. Hey, Natalie. How are you? Good. Good. By the end of today, I need to make sure that we have our positions report and all of the information we need to go into our financials. What time do you think you'll have it done? Before two. Before two. Give me about an hour. Okay. Okay. On expiration Friday, the tension is visible. Tom Sosnoff and Scott Sheridan are the founders and they have been on the trading floor for 20 years. Tom and I never had a business model. What we did was we just showed up for work every day and worked really hard, and we are where we are. We're not your parents' brokerage firm. I think we changed the whole industry. We definitely blazed the technology trail, and we've never been afraid to march to a different beat. People say we are the Apple of the trading space, and to me, Apple is the greatest, so if you want to compare, I'll take that all day long. Over this past year, we went from an under-the-radar brokerage firm to a higher-profile brokerage firm. And I think really you start looking at over the next six months and you're going to hear and see Think or Swim a lot more. Uh, we may just take over this whole building. I think we'll do that. <laughs> Meanwhile, everyone's crying wolf here uh, walking to the bank. Not a bad day. <laughs> There's a sunny day every day on Wall Street. Money is always being made. It all depends on what you're in. See if I can at least squeeze maybe another seven to eight thousand dollar profit for you. The dollar is at the lowest point it's ever been in history. So the question is, what's the hedge? Oil. Oil, oil, oil. The three magic words. And 95 bucks is what we got in last week. It's already 106. Our primary goal this year, besides uh, making our clients money in a bear market, is to land a couple of high profile sports athletes. We feel if we can crack this pro sport networking world, uh, we're going to have a bright future at Broussard and Broussard.
The commodity crude analyst, I mean, is that the guy, to, the place to start? Or? A significant move is coming in crude. So what I'm trying to do now is just assemble a team around it to take advantage of it. Tim, hey, what's happening? What's up, buddy? How you doing? I'm reaching out to anybody that's hands-on in the energy business to try to put together the right team. What's the right price? If, if you make an economic forecast, I mean, it could double, it could have. And in either of those scenarios, if you get them right, there's a significant amount of money to be made. No, I want to write it back to fair value, wherever the fair value is. And Today it's fraught with speculation. The Arabs are turning the spigot on, they're turning it off. China says we don't need any oil, then they come around and buy all the oil that's, that's available for that day. And that's creating this bubble. Yeah, hi. Is Dan in by chance? So what I'm trying to do is put together a team that will analyze the fair value or forecast the value of crude and right, build a product around that. When you look at institutions, the institutions... Barry Fox is a very successful private equity, private equity manager. I would love to get his input on the energy project. They're doing the same speculation that they did with gold in the sense that if the dollar's falling or the markets are falling, people went to gold. Barry's out there with his fingers in many different projects. Now they're saying, if I go to oil, I can have even a faster increase in the price. He may so have a lot of value in assembling a team to figure out the best way to get this done. We, we have to assemble that kind of a exactly. team because the components are out there today. People are panic buying oil now. So the economics of a new fund in this space will be terrific. So we'll do that. Basically what's going on right now is everyone's just panicking. I got a lot of clients that are just sitting on the sidelines in cash. We're just figuring out exactly where this market is heading and what we should do. I had a client panic out of SKF, one of my shorts, a month ago. I, he had 1,900 shit. He left $86,000 on the table. He sold it at 105. It's now 156. On Saturday, he got in contact with Ken. Me and Ken were at the driving range. He gives Ken a call and he says, "Listen, I got to sit down with you guys." He wants to put uh, a, he wants to put half a million dollars. Yeah, back he wants in. to come back in now with half a million dollars. So, you know, I, I tried to explain to him from the get-go that there's only one driver of a car. The same <laughs> applies to this with investments. Leave it to the experts. Let us do our job. Keep playing these ETFs, guys, because that's where we're making the money and that's where we're going to keep making the money of this next one. We're not here like to be that. geniuses. We're here to create wealth. And when we find those pockets of opportunity, we take advantage of them for our clients. That's why they like us. All of us working together in the same Thank office, I believe, is a blessing because we all bring different assets to the table. Justin. Mac, there's a lot of business okay. development. We'll do. Call him and I'll call you back, all right? Tariq is one of my trainees. He's kind of getting the feel of the market. Just get in contact with those potential prospects. Let them know that today is the official start of a bear market. The market is not looking good. The client is not looking to invest. And, uh, you know, you're going to try to convince them in every which way that you're going to make that dollar work for me, and you will. Are we still on for one dollar? Because I, I'm, I'm trying to tell you that we're going to close down today. It's the end of the quarter. Well, he said by 3 o'clock the market would turn around to the downside. It's about 3.30. Kind of go back and forth with this guy, Ken, all day, you know? Because he's always, he's always got to be right. Looks like we're pulling in just you like You were wrong. Thought. You said the market would sell off by 3. I said by it's 4 o'clock It's 3.18. It's 3.18. We'll make small little dollar bets and just, just to prove a point. We got the market rallying, so you are 100% wrong on your prediction. I have 22 minutes. 21 well, that's minutes. why there's two of us. This space captures the think or swim flair. We are in Chicago, downtown, just on the outskirts, which actually is the epitome of think or swim. We're just a little bit on the edge. That would be great. Thanks. Bye. How's that report going? You know what? It's good. I think that we're going to have it right after 2 o'clock. My name's Anthony Batista. Everybody calls me Tony. I bought my first seat in 1987 at the CBOE, and I've been an independent trader my entire life. I was there in 87. I traded all through 2000, the tech bubble. I left the trading floor in 2005. Now with Thinkorswim, I'm an instructor. How can we take advantage of it with defined risk? I go around the country telling customers why they should use our trading platform, showing how they can trade for their own accounts. Everybody loves Tony. He captures our customers' uh, attention, and he knows how to walk someone through a trade. He can make money on both sides because he's buying the future and he's selling somebody else the right 
to buy it at a higher price. The majority of our customers are people who are taking control of their own IRA accounts. They've had them with a brokerage firm and they're not getting the return on their money that they want. Anywhere in between the price he bought in the future and above where he sold the option, he makes money both ways. Anybody can learn to trade. Trading is instant gratification and it's instant pain. If you can take the pain, then maybe you make a great trader. July 13th quarter put spread. June 13th, July 13th quarter put spread. He's buying size down there. SPX is the ticker symbol for the S&P 500. It's a real good benchmark of the top 500 stocks in the U.S. In my pit, we trade options against those. It's our biggest product down here. It's a big money maker for the CBOE. It's their product. It's not traded anywhere else. It's traded right here. How many people do you know that stand in a one and a half foot square area for seven and a half hours every day of their life? Go paint a two foot square area on the ground and stand there for seven and a half hours. I don't think too many people could do it. Our pit is shoulder to shoulder. If I drop something on the floor in the pit, I can't even bend down and pick it up because I'd be pushing a person in front of me. 70 feet! It's even hard sometimes spinning around. You just bump into people, you don't mean to, but that's just the way the crowd is. 2730 on me. It's a big fight for spots out here. Anytime you're in a first come, first serve kind of situation, you get physical, things are gonna happen. I thought that call spot traded. Seriously, I thought it traded. Being close to the broker is a very important thing. The spots around the brokers are very highly contested because that's a very valuable real estate. Being here and being right there makes a world of a difference whether you're going to trade with him or you're going to trade with him. It's night and day. Especially me being taller, this guy's head is going to come up to here and he's going to be yelling at a broker here that's not going to see him. So, I mean, that's just part of the territory. A foot in this crowd could make a difference between a good career and a different career. Hello, this is Christy. I have constant requests throughout the day. Oh, sure. As much mm -hmm. as you think you got 20 things on your list you're gonna touch on and finish today, you know, you get through four. <laughs> and you now have 27 on your list. Hey, Christy. Hey. Well, I got this. Yeah. The report that we were looking at today is really a bottom line. The customer we're getting, how much are they trading? The numbers look good to me, but you know, you're, you're the okay. CFO. If you trade a lot and then you stop trading, you're not stopping trading because uh, you've made too much money. People trade because they're successful, and we can tell by our growth how well our customers are doing. All right, thanks, right. Chrissy. Appreciate it. Um, I got the accrual and the accounting reports. I just need the position reports. Hey, Natalie, it's Christy. Okay, what time do you think? I understand you're juggling a lot of things. Can you pull some files off the FTP site for her? Just keep me updated. Grr. <laughs> I need a drink. Thanks, Aim. You're welcome. You're awesome. That's the reports. We're all set. You ready to go? We have a pretty laid back uh, philosophy at Thinker Swim. Are you guys going up to have a drink? John? Yeah. Are you going up yeah, for a drink? Yeah, I'll go up for a drink. Let's drink it up. <laughs> we work hard, really hard, but we play hard too. I'd gladly have a drink with you. <laughs> will you escort me? I will escort you. On expiration Friday, Scott will bring in bottles of wine. And it's a symbolic toast to our customers that are going through trading Expiration Friday. Cheers. Here's to another expiration. We made it. We're in one piece. Cheers, folks. It's a party for 10 to 15 minutes, and everybody goes back to work. Friday expiration. It's all done. It's all over. Time to celebrate, kick back, and get back to work with you. So. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> I'm on my way. <laughs> And we're down 10 and a half points. I said 20, about two minutes ago, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, 12, 13, you see? Right on the money. Ken made a prediction earlier today that the market would sell off around three o'clock. Fortunately, it's 3.50, about 10 minutes to the close, and the market just now began to sell off. Phil, I made the bet even better. I told you we'd be down 20 points. Mm -hmm. We're down 13. One thing we want to make sure that we do is we bring the best out of everyone. And competition does that. Oh, killing me here. Shit. Ken, you were right. You have my dollar, Dang. buddy? 
Damn it. Mortimer, do you have my doll? <laughs> I have a great time competing against my brother because we're not after each other's throat. It's just for the better of the business itself. I knew the market was going to sell off. Who would have thought Man, the market... This is, this is, who would have thought the market would have closed up today? Sounds like CNBC to me. You sound like a plenty no, of I'm not backpedaling. I'm not backpedaling. Don't backpedal here. I already Stick said to your that gun. wrong that the market didn't... Know. Actually, I'm not wrong. I'm not wrong. Actually, the, the, the final numbers have just came in. The market just closed. The final numbers just came in. And actually, Ken, the market closed up two points. So I wasn't wrong. He wasn't wrong. He was right. You know what? The market was, was down. You got to wait till all the trades settle. I won into the close, and the numbers were adjusted at 402. And I lost in the aftermarket. I'm figuring this. If we can implement that strategy, Buy, put options well, for I mean that, that HK that, that, that you looked right. at, that thing, the whole But the calls, the calls got really expensive this morning because the stock shot up 10%. Mm -hmm. I think we can still get a good price on it. I was born and raised here in New York, and I got into this business as a result of a bubble in an agricultural market back in the mid-70s. So where are you guys? Uh, we're 59th and Park. I watched commodity traders who I knew nothing about make millions and millions of dollars on a runaway sugar market. And it just occurred to me today, we're seeing the same type of move in crude. It's a once in a lifetime move. Wall Street's been very good to me. I came down prompted by the sugar bubble and participated in the gold bubble, several economic cycles. I love it as much as the first day I came down to the street. Got it, done. Okay, I'll see you in a little bit. I take the bus to and from work. I'm a salesman, I'm on stage all the time. I like to talk to people on the bus. And since it originates in Midtown, it's filled with Madison Avenue, it's filled with Wall Street advertising. The average net worth on the Madison Avenue bus is probably $10 million. So I mean, everybody's rich, everybody's good looking. You'll make contacts and connections all day long on the Madison Avenue bus. Every day down here is interesting to me just due to the fact I am one of the elder statesmen out here. Uh, this probably shouldn't go on television, but I've been down here since 1978, so I've been down here 30 years. And I was down here actually during the crash in 1987, probably one of the most significant occurrences ever in the market. And I'm not going to say that I took it for granted being down here up until then. I mean, I knew it was a serious business, high money, but at that time I was a broker in the crowd. And I will never forget these group of guys that traded behind me, some of the biggest traders in the crowd. I looked at two of them and they had tears coming down their face. It kind of stops me in my tracks now when I think of it, to see two grown men, two family men, good guys, that had just lost everything, boom, it was over. There's nothing down here that has ever happened that has ever made a bigger impression on me and it's something that has helped me along the way because it, it teaches you to always take things serious. You may see a smile at time, you may see joking at time in this crowd, but I think everyone almost to a man knows in one second you better be ready to wipe that smile off and get ready to do your job because that's how quick things happen in the world. It scares you positively. I mean, I have a wife and two children and I take pride in providing for them, so it's my motivating factor. I'm not gonna let that happen. So if anybody really steps out of line, that's what they get. If I pass out, guys, nobody give me CPR. But we're doing this for insurance purposes. He's upgrading his life insurance. He's got his wife and family is a little bit nervous with all the stress and stuff. This is what big boys do. We get blood in the bear market. They're retesting my phone. I don't need it retested. I need a new handset. I need a handset. 